another moderator prep source review. My name is Thane Cole Morgan. Uh, this one is going to cover taking control, um, sovereignty and democracy after Brexit. It's by Philip Cunliffe, George Oare, Lee Jones, and Peter Ramsey. This is in preparation for discussion on immigration, national sovereignty, and populism with Eric Hoffman and one of the authors of this book, Philip Cunliffe. Uh, so the quick background on this is that uh, the book tries to discuss why Brexit happened and ultimately argues that it was necessary for creating a more democratic British state. Uh, some terms to pay attention to, as I'll just to get you on the same page of where I'm at, is uh, that liberal elite, uh, that's what is considered as sort of the establishment politicians, regardless of what uh, particular party they are in, they all kind of share this liberal elite uh, status or title in this book. Uh, neoliberal is the ideology that the liberal elite are following. Uh, this is an ideology that was really started by Friedrich Hayek, but has obviously had some uh, different intermixing from other people's ideologies over the years, but it's what the authors claim are the predominant ideology that is motivating the EU and the current liberal elite of Britain. Uh, and then lastly is this idea of illiberal liberalism, which at the start sounds like a massive contradiction, um, which it ultimately is, which is why it's not particularly credible, again, uh, coming from the authors on that. But illiberal liberalism is essentially state-enforced liberal ideology. Uh, so there's no voluntary following of illiberal liberalism. It is an enforced ideology. So that's why it's a liberal. Um, so I could do a really detailed chapter analysis on here. I think that would take too long. So I'm, I'm going to kind of go quickly on this to just give people the, the key things uh, as I see it from this book. So uh, starting off is a framing of the debate across party lines. Uh, so there's uh, the right populist and Eurosceptic side of Brexit, and there's the left Europhile liberal elite side. Uh, the authors basically say that each has their own view of the EU, but that it's ultimately not complete or at least wrong in some way. Um, the left sees the EU, or really the, the sort of left Europhile sees the EU as cosmopolitan, as a peace project, as a pooling of sovereignty, and as locking in social protections that enable liberal democracy. Whereas the right sees the EU as an unaccountable foreign bureaucracy imposing laws on a, on a national, on a on Britain and its member states and eroding the national sovereignty of those states. Uh, the authors claim that these are wrong because the right misunderstands that the source of unaccountability actually isn't due to some foreign body or some, some foreign politicians, but rather that the state's own politicians are not particularly accountable or beholden to their own populaces as a result of intermixing with the EU. Uh, and the left misunderstands the EU because the peace was really not achieved by the EU, but more as a result of being under the safety umbrella of NATO. Um, they also say that the EU is not particularly cosmopolitan because everybody within it still identifies with their member state country first and foremost, and that social protections are not particularly strong as the EU isn't enabled any sort of EU-wide minimum wage and has also worked to undermine any labor protections uh, that especially were in the UK prior to the 1970s. Um, so that's kind of the debate as it's framed and why it's wrong. Uh, the next part of the book that it's important to understand is it gives a an endorsement and a history of nationalism within the UK. So they talk about uh, different eras of nationalism or nationalist orientation of the British state. And the first of those eras is the pre-war era, uh, which is when Britain is still a, a power, a, an empire um, that has holdings all over the place. And nationalism at this point is really about uh, empire and global standing and prestige. Uh, then there's the post-war era, which is a nationalism created by the Labour Party and the more socialist uh, types uh, in the government at the time. And this is all around nationalism girded by the working class and the worker and by labor. 
so it's more inward facing. Um, then there's the 1970s period. This is where nationalism starts to fade away. Uh, this comes about because the socialist planning, uh, or really the sort of command economy style planning, uh, after the war has not resulted in a very vibrant economy and essentially loses credibility. And so um, Margaret Thatcher comes in and sets up a more free market economy style uh, that also works with the outside world and starts to trade globally. Uh, the authors locate this as the start of the erosion of the democratic uh, institutions within the country. Um, then there's, after the 1970s, an, a new left phase. This kind of follows a classic ping-ponging back and forth between ideologies. But there's a new left which has now embraced uh, neoliberal tenets. It's done away with its command economy, socialist uh, style uh, policies that it used to have and it moves to more of an identity politics, uh, assuming uh, neoliberal uh, economics. Uh, and then after that, that's sort of the Tony Blair era, there's basically this entrenched neoliberal elite that has been a part of British politics ever since. Uh, so, and national orientation at this point is, is pretty much dead, according to the authors. Um, so then we get to the Brexit uh, saga, and the authors talk about how Brexit is primarily motivated by a desire for accountability with their uh, elected officials. They see the EU as an erosion of that credibility uh, because elites no longer need to interface with their own constituencies, but rather in, inter, uh, interface with the rest of the elites of the EU and so are accountable to themselves, but not their populations. Um, they also talk about uh, during this, that the divide, they, they really come out critical of the liberal elite as being fairly out of touch with why leaving would sounds like a credible maneuver or why it would even be desired. And they call out the liberal elites, I guess they might call it kind of shoddy tactics of berating the backward, backwardness of the non-elite, of creating a fear campaign and then also of having a whole bunch of false predictions about the potential doom of leaving the EU. So it's really kind of a call out of an out of touch elite that is not beholden and entrenched in their power. Um, they go on to talk about how Brexit is a first step in moving to a more uh, liberal, or I should say a more democratic uh, Britain. Um, they again, or they call out the sort of liberal elite sins of trying to undermine the democratic will of the British country to leave, or rather the British populace to leave. Uh, they call out par Parliament for stepping outside of the bounds of their um, of the power that they've been given. Um, they also call out the Corbynite socialists, uh, the Jeremy Corbyn and kind of his crew. Um, as being big hypocrites because they are supposed to stand for the little guy, for the working class, uh, and for, for sort of the, the mass uh, of people rather than for the elites. And so they call out their hypocrisy as basically siding with the neoliberal elite and the uh, entrenched elite bureaucracy. And then finally, they also call out the right and the populists because uh, they basically say that their endorsement of uh, laissez-faire e economics is also a prime is a contradiction ultimately because that endorsement was sort of instrumental in leading to the EU and this unaccountability in the first place. Uh, they kind of trace that back to Thatcher's opening up of the economy to the rest of the world in the late 70s. So they're sort of dishing out criticism to all of the current players. Uh, lastly, they kind of get into both a bit of recommendations of, of what is needed and then again trying to call out some of the critiques that they think are unfair that may be leveled against what they desire. So ultimately they call out a uh, that a radical change is needed with the way that British politics works right now. They want a healthy nationalism to come into place that is democratic in nature. Uh, they talk about how strict anti-nationalism is misplaced uh, 
They think that there's a misplaced fear of authority that's needed for self-government on the part of the leftists. Uh, they also call out that immigration is not something that would necessarily be done away with under nationalism because people are ultimately more open to that uh, than they were before. Um, they call out the hypocrisy on the war uh, front as well. Uh, nationalism is supposed to be a source of war, and they call out how the globalist aims of the liberal elite have actually caused plenty of war most recently with uh, Ukraine and the expansion of NATO into, um, not necessarily into Russia, I guess, but towards Russian area, Russian red lines, rather. So the key point being that war is equally caused by globalist aims as opposed to nationalist aims. Uh, and then finally, they kind of end with a recommendation, a set of recommendations. Uh, first, they say that Britain should leave the NATO uh, because it perverts the national and democratic uh, functioning of uh, the British state. They call for a reunification with Ireland uh, because they say the current situation really just serves the elites of Ireland and also of the UK. Uh, they also say that there's potentially a security problem that has now emerged after Brexit where those elites may be may have interests that are conflicting, which is not good. So they want to reunify Ireland, uh, excuse me, Ireland uh, for the benefit of the great mass of people rather than just for the elite people who rule each area. Uh, they also call uh, for stopping Scotland from trying to separate. Their point here is that, that the desire to separate really comes from a void of democratic institutions within the UK and that if there were actually functioning democratic institutions, this desire to be separate would actually not be there. So they just think it's the wrong solution to the problem of lack of accountability. And then finally, they call for reforming parliament, which they see as ultimately not beholden to the democratic interest of the population, but rather for their own self-interest uh, with their cronies. Uh, both inside Britain and outside. So in conclusion, the main point of this is, again, leaving the EU was the right step uh, for Brexit. It's the right first step, but ultimately um, isn't enough to create what people desire, which is an accountable governing body uh, that is democratically accountable to their own populace, which is what ultimately everybody who is sort of railing against the EU wants. So um, I guess the last thing that they say uh, that is really worth noting in this conclusion is that uh, they call for ejecting the current elite, uh, the current liberal elite ruling class, uh, and they want to replace them with more democratic and nationally oriented institutions and politicians. Uh, and so they, they see that as ultimately the way forward now that Brexit has been completed. Okay, so more will come. Uh, that is the quick snapshot of taking control.